Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of In Pit Lane coming to you across Melbourne on Channel 31 and of course the In Pit Lane YouTube channel. Now coming up this week on the program we're going to get down and dirty. We're going to be talking about rallying with our special guest Gordon Grant a little bit later on in the program. We've also got music from Snow & Co. They're going to be joining us a little bit later on in the program as well. But alongside me, joining me as usual, a survivor of the great election of 2022, please welcome Craig Doc Gladigo. Big weekend. Hello, dear chap. Taking a bow. Yes, huge weekend. Let's not go into it. It's a new era, but uh, yeah, it's uh, great to be back. Great to be talking to you and great to be what massive motorsport to mount everywhere at the moment, week in, week out. It's, it's, been, it's, been, it's been absolutely crazy. You know what? But I've always wanted to do breakfast television and tonight this is as close as we've got, got to it. Speaking of which, we're going, to, we've got, we're going to go through a lot of stuff tonight on the program, so let's not waste any more time. Let's check out what's been happening around the world of local and international motorsport. This is the In Pit Lane Motorsport News. Max Verstappen has surged back into the lead of the World Formula One Drivers' Championship after a win in last weekend's Spanish Grand Prix. Verstappen was helped in the win by the failure of his main rival, Ferrari driver Charles Leclerc, whose car lost power while comfortably leading the race on lap 28. He was also assisted by teammate Sergio Perez, who was convinced, ordered, by his team to move aside for the Dutchman while in the lead. Perez went on to finish a disappointed second. Mercedes continued their improvements from Miami with a third place for George Russell. Russell again led home his much more illustrious teammate, Lewis, sorry, Sir Lewis Hamilton, who finished fifth behind Carlos Sainz. Norris now seems to have assumed lead status in the Mercedes team from the seven-time world champion. It was another disappointing race for Daniel Ricciardo. Ricciardo started from seventh on the grid, but after another characteristically poor start, slowly fell back through the pack to eventually finish in 12th. His teammate, Lando Norris, finished 8th. Norris, however, is in some doubt for next weekend's Monaco Grand Prix, after being diagnosed with tonsillitis the morning after the race. This potentially opens up the possibility of young Australian driver Oscar Piastri to make his Formula One debut on the streets of Monaco alongside fellow Aussie Ricardo next weekend. Cam Waters has come away with the lion's share of points following last weekend's supercar round at Winton Motor Raceway. Waters was fast all weekend, winning the first and second races, before a second place to championship leader Shane Van Gisbergen in race three. Van Gisbergen's race three victory and a disappointing weekend for Dick Johnson Racing's Anton Di Pasquale saw the Kiwi driver leave Winton with an increased lead in this year's championship as the teams get ready for the long trip to Darwin for the big Triple Crown meeting next month. A huge crowd saw Mildura driver Phil Lamartina take the honours in last weekend's Top Fuel Championship round at Heathcote Park Dragway. Lamartina took the victory over Shane Olive in the final, keeping in contention for the championship as it heads towards its final round, also in Darwin at the Triple Threat meeting next month. The huge crowd tested resources of the Victorian country drag strip with mobile phone reception failing completely due to the huge number of people on hand and local police forced to turn away many disappointed fans as a result of the huge traffic jam and a full house. Despite these problems, the meeting was an enormous success and a great reward for the many weeks of hard work by Lance Warren and his team at Heathcote Park. They now have some time to regroup, debrief and make all the necessary changes before the Top Fuel Series returns to the track for round two of next season's championship in October. Book your accommodation now. And speaking of new tracks, the Oakley Go-Kart Club were back on the newly extended Deals Road circuit for the running of the Top Guns Championship. The circuit, which was built with the support of the state government, had to be resurfaced following problems at the track's debut several months ago. Thankfully, there were no such problems this time around, with competitors enthusiastic about the new and challenging circuit, which extends the original length of the track, as well as providing some interesting and challenging elevation changes. Ari Kuriaku won both finals in KA3 Junior and KA2, with Jake Santa Lucia winning in KA3 Senior Light. New Zealand driver Scott Dixon will start from the pole for this weekend's running of the Indianapolis 500. 
the 2008 500 winner set a four lap average of 376.66 kilometres an hour to win his fifth pole at the Speedway. Alongside Dixon on the front row of the grid will be his Chip Ganassi racing teammate Alex Pillow ahead of Dutch driver Renus BK in the first of the Chevy powered cars. Australia's Will Power will start from 11th on the grid, but Scott McLaughlin had a poor qualifying session and will start in 26th. BMW driver Sheldon Vanderlinde became the first double winner of the 2022 DTM season with a controlled drive from pole at the Lausitz ring last weekend. The South African driver led all the way to take the win but came under late pressure from Maro Engel, winning the race by just three hundredths of a second. On Saturday, Vanderlinde led all the way to finish ahead of Bathurst 12 hour winner Lucas Stoltz and Lucas Auer, both driving Mercedes. Gailey Rovenpera claimed his third World Rally Championship victory in as many events in Portugal to open a commanding lead in this year's championship. The Finnish driver beat Toyota teammate Elfin Evans to win by 15.2 seconds. He now holds a 46-point championship lead after four of the 13 rounds. And more good news for Australians abroad, with Jack Doohan finishing second in last Sunday's Formula 2 feature race in Spain to keep him in contention for the title. The race was won by Felipe Drugovic, who also claimed victory in Saturday's sprint race. Drugovic charged through the field from 10th place to snatch the lead on lap 27 from the Australian. Drugovic now leads the championship with 86 points, 26 clear of Teo Porchain, as they head to the fifth round in Monaco this weekend. And another second place to Australia's Christian Mansell in the latest round of the Euro Formula Series at Paul Ricard in France. The event was won by series leader Oliver Goethe, but Mansell's second place in race three and another win in the reverse grid race keeps him in touch with the lead in this year's championship. Goethe currently leads the series by 35 points over the young Australian. And that is the In Pit Lane news for the week commencing Monday the 23rd of May 2022. If you'd like to catch up with all the latest motorsport news, remember to join us live every Thursday night at 9 on the In Pit Lane YouTube channel and Facebook page for Full Course Yellow. But we'll have more news here next week. And we'll have more news for you next week. When we come back after this break, we're going to be joined by our special guest in the studio talking all things rallying, Gordon Grant. This is In Pit Lane on Channel 31. We'll be right back after this. If you're watching on Facebook, it is a particularly... Car like we've Once again, COVID has reared its ugly head. We've, we have uh, managed to lose a lot of, a lot of crew tonight and um, we've got a lot of new people on tonight who uh, know what they're doing but don't understand the show. And let's face it, if you haven't been, if you haven't been watching the show... It's a very, very hard show to understand. Oh, sorry, Brett, I didn't hear you. Can you repeat that again? No, <laughs> we don't have time. Seeing it is now getting close to midnight. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. By the way, anybody at home watching, I, I, I won't be. Could you have breakfast ready for me when I get back? Thank you. We'll, um, we'll, we'll grab a menu and we're just going to hang it up. To the hang it up. Because they won't be able to hear us anyway. Yeah. Okay, we must say thank you very quickly to our friends at Online Invent. They're the people who are, the, they're responsible. You, you blame them. You blame Roy, Roy and all of his team at Online Invent. Thank you for their support. Mm. Websites, SEO services, digital marketing, they do all of those sorts of things. They have been fantastic to us. They have kept the show on the air for another season. I would tell you lots more about it, but we're really, really short on time, and we're going to get back onto the second segment yeah. as soon as humanly possible. Pete? He's a great guy, Roy. Welcome back to In Pit Lane. Well, rallying is something we don't talk about a lot on the program. I mean, we've, we've certainly used to covered you know, rallying in the past, but it's very hard to get them you know, like you know, actually in a city because they're all out running around the bush and having a lot of fun. We covered the uh, covered a recent rally up at Marysville just recently. It was ve it was very very wet and very cold. Someone who was there can tell us all about it, as well as a state of local rallying and also what he does with his day job. And that's a bit interesting as well. Please welcome to the program, Gordon Grant. Gordon, welcome to. In pit lane. Thanks for having me, boys. Now yeah. let's. Um, well, before we get onto the road, let's talk about what you actually do, because you actually yeah. you build cars, and but they're sort of rally cars with a slight difference. Tell us what you actually uh, what you build. Um, so I basically have a motorsport fabrication workshop in Melbourne West. I'm specialising in building uh, Mark II escorts, um, bitumen cars, gravel rally cars, but all 
not like your run-of-the-mill escorts. It's all um, sequential gearbox, fuel-injected engines, high horsepower, and yeah, so that's what I, I build. So where do these cars come from? Are they, like, do people just bring you yeah. old escorts? <coughs> yeah, or no. Are they remanufactured? Yeah, no, no, they, these are all actually original. Australia's got real good shells still. Um, the, um, I'm actually doing builds from all over, from one from Perth, one from Queensland, um, one from New South Wales, a couple local cars, um, another build coming from South Australia in the next couple of weeks. So yeah, they are coming from all over um, because I, I'm offering a service for these cars that's not really been in the country before. Um, obviously, the Pommy Fords is more of a UK thing and European thing, but um, yeah, I'm offering that to the Australian market because um, you guys love Datsuns over here for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> there's some, uh, sounds like there's some real good top disposable income top end rebuilds there, mm. but you have one yourself as well too stashed away there, and look, it's a one of a one, really yeah. rare car. I saw yeah. a bit of a shot of it earlier. Um, and it's uh, done a strange one-off rally in Malaysia. Yeah, it's yeah. Jakarta car, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, so I um, yeah. Actually, you own it. Too. Yeah, yeah. It's actually my own car. It was um, a Ford Escort factory-built Ford Escort Cosworth rally car. Um, numbers matching. One rally history. Rally Malaysia, 1994. Built for the Prime Minister of Indonesia's son-in-law. Um, yeah, so it's sitting on 701 genuine miles on the clock at the minute. I don't think I'll be rallying it again. Um, <laughs> it's pretty fresh looking, so it's just tucked away. And yeah, I don't think you it'll do be get the it once in a while. Though. Yeah, but just a car a, show. A, a, car a, show. Sun, a Sunday's car yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Months ago, I saw. Yeah, hasn't nobody's seen the car in 28 years or something? It's just been a bit of a barn find. And the term barn find's thrown around quite a lot, but this this genuinely was a car that's never seen the light of day for a long, long time. And it was only literally February time that's been out in public and been seen again. So yeah, it's good to get the car out and let people see that these cars are out there. Um, but yeah, definitely not too many of them in Australia. Check out Flash Motorsport because that's where uh, that's where you might be able to get a glimpse of it or when you take it <laughs> out on, on to a show. Yeah. Now you, you've, you've done some rallying. We, we talked about yeah. some rallying. Like, in the, the, what's the, the scene like at the moment? It seems to be, it seems to be a, a, a sport that has really sort of struggled at times mm. to, to get there. It's, it's very hard to, increasingly hard to find areas to run in. Yeah, uh, yeah. Increasingly hard to get things like insurance. We've seen just recently the Motorsport Australia's decision regarding target rallies. Yeah, sure. um, how does that sort of thing affect uh, rallying at the moment? What's the scene like here at the moment? Look, I feel. Um yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously from overseas, from a, a background where it's massively popular and, and they, they don't struggle to get the numbers. Um, I've been in around the scene now a few years and, I mean, the, the sport is surviving. I think there's a lot to be, that can be grown on the sport um, to make it thrive. Um, there is some things that have to be looked at, um, whether it be the, the rules need to be a bit more open to attract one, make more spectators, and two, more people for Fred in the shed wanting to build the car that he wants to rally and hasn't have to be pigeonholed to build X car and has to run it in this class. There should, definitely should be more of an open class like you see in New Zealand, Europe, UK, Ireland, all those places. Um, because you just got to look at the numbers with it all, you know. You can't just say that Australia's uh, rally scene is um, just just so happened to be small. It's small for a reason, and and the reason's quite clear that it, it's um, the rules need to be changed or something needs to happen to get more people in and get more people watching the sport. Well, you were saying just when we spoke on the phone the other day yeah. that about coming in here that you know the, the cars that you build yeah. and all that, some of the modifications you make to those cars to make yeah. them better cars more reliable and all the rest of it and, yeah. and safer and, and of course faster as well but you're saying that you're having trouble sometimes getting getting those cars accepted yeah i mean like it's it's i, I build whatever the customer wants is obviously that's the, I, prefer, um, I provide a service um and whatever the customer wants the customer gets but uh, something that's be, it's been brought to my attention purely because of my advertising or social media is um the negatives of it you'll get somebody sitting at home and typing the keyboard on a comment on a cut of a build saying now oh, what what rules does this comply with what so this is the this is the mindset a lot of people are in and um, is it is it the need for the organization seem to be more transparent and open and embracing what people to take yeah. some feedback otherwise people are not what's going on all the time if yeah. they don't actually listen to and they sit in a and you're like oh, la, 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 I'm, not, yeah. I'm not listening to anything they're not going to be able to um, you know open it up to yeah. every participant yeah I feel I feel like that you know like I say it this the sport is surviving and for it to thrive something needs to change like they can keep the existing structure, but maybe something needs to open up where we have an open class. So then you have the boys that are very by the book and want to stay in their categories and classes. That's all good. That gets the numbers. It works. But for it to grow, I feel like something else needs to come along. Something to 
for people, well, I want to rally this, I've got the money to build this, and just let them do it. And just go into an open class. It's a free-for-all on that end. As long as it's safe, I don't see the problem in it. Mm. Um, and I let the boys that want to be, you know, manufacture builds and Curious. everything. Yeah, let, let them do their own thing. They can make up the numbers, but then what's going what's gonna to draw the crowd and the spectators and the interest of the sport in Australia is going to be these freak cars, the ones that sound. And, yeah, oh, it's loud. Yeah. They come in, you know, you can hear them two kilometres away coming through the forest. They're, they're the cars that people... And that was and that was one of the things with rallying back in the day. Of course, you had sort of, you know, like, yeah. yeah, you had, you had the, 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 the... You mentioned Datsuns. I mean, yeah. there, were, there were some people putting, like, rotaries in Datsuns yeah, of course, and all yeah, the rest yeah. of it, and people loved them yeah. and all that. Um, look, we'll, we'll find out more about that in, in a moment because it's an interesting topic to talk about. But we're uh, just about ready to take a break here once again on In Pit Lane. When we come back, we're going to be having some uh, some live music taking us out tonight is Show & Co. They'll be joining us in just a moment to take us out. But right now, we're on a break here on In Pit Lane, Channel 31. We'll be back with more In Pit Lane right after this break. Okay, we're on. A, okay, we're on a break. Yep. Time for okay. bonus. Cool. Um, okay, let's get the um, let's get the band in, into position, and we'll get some uh, we'll get some music for those of you watching live on Facebook. Um, if you're if you're still awake, we'll we'll wake you up now because we're going to have some we have <laughs> some music say, from uh, from Show and Show and Co. Now is it Show and Co. or Show and Company? Snow. Snow. Sorry, Snow. Does that show? Snow and Co. or Snow and Snow, Company? Snow and Co. Snow and Co. Snow and Co. You're doing beautifully, Wes. <laughs> Thank you. I was going to say we're under we're a bit, of, a bit of duress the tonight. The the oh. Okay, well, That's snowy. we'll we'll be joined and uh, we'll have um, we don't have any we, we've got very few graphics tonight, but they're playing around. Around the place, they're doing some recording at the moment. There you are. Uh, no, that's not uh, the. That's that's our last week's guest. That's Brian Peters, who yeah, was. Uh, I was going to say. Yes, yeah. who was in action on the weekend. The heading well was good, but her. we just need to work on the content. We we do, but but anyway, well, we'll. Anyway, uh, I was going to say, guys, sh throw it at me right now. Where are you going to be in the next few weeks, or what's uh, up? We're actually recording our second album at Sing Sing at the moment. So yep. uh, that's um, that's been. Uh, we've done a few days in there a couple of weeks ago. What suburb are they, Snow? Uh, they're in South South Yarra. Cool, that's it. Um, and, yep. uh, so, uh, we're just doing the mic. Yeah, we've just played at the uh, Workers Club on Sunday, and uh, that's uh, very so, popular. Yeah, that's a great gig, and yep. uh, so uh, yeah, so we've got a few few little gigs. What's the next up, one coming up? Um, uh, well, we're just doing one in Frankston, a private function. So uh, yep. yeah, so, so that'll be good. And, good stuff. Uh, otherwise, um, yeah, this new album's going to be quite. A, Where will we quite find epic, you? Um, uh, so, yeah, so it's just www.snowandco.com.au. Cool. And uh, yeah, we're on, on uh, Facebook. Um, we've got a YouTube channel, Snow and Co. So there you go, everyone out there. There's the details. There's the details. Live stream land. Details, live stream land. details yep. there. So um, yeah, so catch up with the uh, band. But right now, we're going to hear them. Uh, we're going to hear the guys in action, ladies and gentlemen. Joining us on the program, a special bonus for what you're watching uh, live on Facebook and on the Impit Lane YouTube channel. This is Snow and Co. and Running. We're at the Beer Expo Beautiful ladies Whirl out their feet Feel so Excited Look out the window As I'm driving by Can't help but think How fast this life Passes us all by It's the dreaming girls Dreaming boys, get out alone, make some new friends, you dwell on the past, boy, it's a slow, lonely death right to the end. Now, you're running away, running away, running 
from the people closest to your heart can deal with your emotions because they've all been torn apart see it all goes back to childhood when you feel that you were wrong now you're just a stubborn fool in a world you don't belong there's nobody there you're out on your own living your life down the long winding Father, running from your mother, running from your sister, running from your brother again, running. How do you feel? You gotta face the facts. Sometimes you need to look back and say, I was wrong. It's just time and space. Everybody needs their space to run. Run away. Run away. I'm just going to let the engine dr trail off into the distance. That how was snow, how appropriate. That was snow and co and running. And they'll be joining us a little bit later on in the program to take us out at the end of the next segment. So if you just stay there, guys, for a moment, because the next segment is going to be blindingly quick and we'll be back with you. So uh, if. Uh, Hopefully, I'll definitely, because we can't hear ourselves tonight. <laughs> we, so whenever they're ready, Pete, uh, next one. Now, we'll just uh, say once again, if you would, uh, we're coming to the end of our series here on Inpit Lane for, uh, for this, this first series, but we are hoping to come back uh, later on in the year for a second series as per usual. And if you'd like to be a part of that, then uh, you can do that by being, uh, becoming a member of RMITV Student Television. This program is done completely by, by volunteers, 100%. People who are interested in television, you don't have to be a student. There it is. Well, the wild world of television, film and television, RMITV uh, is available for you. No experience necessary. Come on in. We'll, uh, we'll, you, you'll be a part of this program and a lot of other shows here on Channel 31, on the web. Feast in, on media. Yeah, feast on... That's, I like that. Feast on... That could be, that could be the slogan. RMIT, we feast on media. Absolutely. And oh, the opportunities are endless. That's a cliche, that one. But no, I don't like that one as much. The first one I made up was off the cuff. Welcome back to In Pit Lane. Joining us a little bit later on in the program to take us out tonight will be our band Snow and Co. But right now we're back with our special guest tonight. He is Gordon Grant. And Gordon, we were talking just before the just before the break about the, the state of rallying and uh, in 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 Australia. The uh, it's a form of rallying, I suppose. The Motorsport Australia recently made the announcement that they were suspending events, Targa events like the Targa Tasmania. Yeah. That is a problem. If you talk to a lot of people in the world of circuit racing, a lot of them are saying, look, the reason that our, the reason our insurance is so high the, in, in the sport, the reason the permits are so high is because of rallying target things like that yeah. um from a rallying point of view i mean what do you think could be to, to make those sort of events you know more accessible but also safer what, what what can we do or do we just have to live with the fact that you know, these things are just dangerous i think it's one of those things where just unfortunate things do happen in the sport um you know you get it you get it in all sports whether it be afl nrl or whatever um, it just as of late there has been a lot of it and there's not too much we can do about it and I think making the sport sacrifices is only going to make things worse and if there's much dwell period on it then people are going to reflect on it more and it's just going to be a bit of a snowball effect on the sport. I mean yeah sure stop take a few minutes to think about it what can be improved but you've got to be very realistic about it. Um, and you just can't let the sport sacrifice at the end of it. You said there could be a bit of a spiraling down, though, but you're a good-looking rooster. You've been a man of the world. I'm going to say, and I'm not, I've got, there's something coming from here, but you've been around a lot longer than people realise. I'm waiting to see where he's going, going to. Just you've, yeah, you've, hold you've, on, strap yourself you've, in you've for come this one. From, you've come from the UK, Gordon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And yeah. used to rally back in, way back in the 2000s. I yeah. think even Colin McRae, you were around, yeah, mixing in the yeah. pits with him there at one stage yeah. many, many moons ago. <laughs> but you used to run a Peugeot, 
and, yeah. I'll, and a little little Peugeot GTI. Yeah. So you've been there and done that. Yeah. For what sure. what made it work back then in the UK when you were thrashing it out then, and mm. you still do it, and you're doing it again now, 20 years later in Australia? Yeah. Yeah. What's the differences, and what how can we improve from what it was back then? <laughs> That's a tough question. You know, the, I mean, back then it's um, you're actually fighting to get an entry, even as a as a newbie coming into the sport. You know, I was third generation into it. It was just it almost half expected of me to be going to the sport and it doesn't need any advertising you know you've got thousands of people at the weekend going out packing up picnics and going out and watching the sport all of it all ages the family be there um over in australia i mean i don't know what's what the missing link is i i obviously wasn't in the sport actively um in the early days here um and i don't know if it if it, it does go back to the rules thing and I just, I just feel there is a lot of motorsport options here. You know, you can be in a drag race and you can be in a V8 supercar stuff, hill climb, etc. There, there, there is a lot more diversity over here. So I just don't know if people um, have done it for a financial thing and picked maybe drag racing over and circuit racing over rallying. But there, there definitely is, there's definitely more potential for the sport. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah it's very expensive. And, but you can do it at all different levels. You can do it from clubmen all the way up to, mm. you know, full ARC level, you know, whatever you want to do. Well, it's good It's good to see that the, the people are out there and still rallying. It's a, it's a great sport, lots of fun. Good luck for the rest of the year. Good luck. Yeah. Uh, just give yourself a quick plug if people are after one of those uh, Mark II Escorts. Yeah, oh, well, just any motorsport fabrication works um, in the west of Melbourne. Flash Motorsport, check us out on Facebook or Instagram. There you go. Okay, thank Gordon, thanks for joining no us in worries. Pit Lane. Thanks for having okay, us. thank you for, at home for joining us once again. Now, next week we will have our final show for the year, so um, or for the, this season anyway, but to take us out tonight, our band tonight is Snow and & Co, and uh, you'll see them playing. They're playing all over the place. You can catch up with their social media all over the place. They're on Facebook, they're on Instagram, they've got a website. There it is, snowandco.com.au, if you want to find out what they're doing. But right now, they're going to take us out tonight with Asleep Under the Stars. Until we see you next week, good night. Take you down to the crossroads and show you where to turn Then I'll go down to your house and watch it slowly burn You can drive a thousand miles before you need more fuel But you don't care anyway, cause you got to be the fool you Sleep under the stars you Sleep under the stars you Sleep under the stars you better bring your box of tools and work a new way out Cause nobody's gonna be around to hear your crying shout Take your time, don't go too high, don't put yourself too far Everything's gonna be alright when you sleep under the stars 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 Found a way, you made it right, you took it by the horns Lost it down, lost and found, blowing in the storm Why not try and start again, just reprogram your mind Watch it grow, watch it move, what you gonna find Sleep under the stars Sleep under the stars Sleep under the stars Sleep under the stars, boys, what you want to do. Dream about the good times, is what you do. Motivate your senses, want to really bite. Want to really bite, want to really bite. Sleep under the stars. Sleep under the stars. Sleep under the stars.
But After it's... tonight, anything that's endless is worrying me. Say, the tonight's show is endless. I was going to say, and you can help us get up off the ground a lot faster. <laughs> we, we need a rocket tonight as well, too. We, we're running a few. We can use a few extra, a couple of extra people, that's for sure. Add, some add gas wouldn't go astray tonight. Okay, when they're ready, Pete, to, uh, to go to the next uh, segment, we shall do that. As dear as it is. <laughs> 